Hi, welcome back. This is episode four of the Atlas Search Scene. Topic for this episode is searching. Things to really take into consideration when you're setting up your search is how the index configuration really matters for uh, findability, just being able to match documents, as well as relevancy. So we're going to take a look at each of those uh, concerns here. Um, drilling into how index configuration matters for search, uh, let's just refresh what we learned at the uh, last episode where we talked about the analysis process and we talked about the uh, terms that become searchable through that analysis process. So what I'm doing here is uh, demonstrating uh, the terms that come out from the basic analyzers that are in Atlas Search. And so we have the standard analyzer, simple, white space, English keyword, and this is emulates the autocomplete field type here. So uh, using these various analyzer configurations, these are the words that end up in our full text inverted index that uh, determines what the query operators at search time are able to match on. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be an exact match on these things. You do have some fuzzy operators where it can be close enough and match, but consider these your atomic searchable units and um, you're building queries that are able to match these in exact or semi-exact manner, okay? So that's the, the trick to uh, analysis and the configuration and the searchability and, and again, the relevancy of the results that you have. And then we're gonna drill into the search operators and uh, what your options are in terms of what you can search for and uh, how that matches and how that affects the relevancy. We're gonna then drill into more about relevancy and, and that topic is, is obviously the keen thing for today. And uh, the reason I'm focused on relevancy here, there are different ways that you can search and match with Atlas Search. You can search numeric ranges, you can search geospatial, uh, and, and so on, and vectors as well. So that type of matching is, is certainly powerful and necessary. Uh, but what we're talking about in this episode is full text search uh, primarily, because that's where kind of the interesting things happen and where... Uh, more of the work is required as a developer working with a search engine such as Atlas Search. We are searching for movies here, um, and we're going to limit our domain to movies that Keanu Reeves was a cast in, just so we have a, a tractable data set to, to ponder over. And we can see that there's movies, and this is focused on these right here, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Both have the words adventure or journey in it. So um, we're gonna look for those, but not with those exact terms here and see how our index configuration affects the findability and, and even the relevancy of, of our, our results here. So let's take a look at uh, what this looks like with a particular query here, where just out of the default configuration, we're going to search for, and uh, you know, don't don't get caught too much in the syntax. You can look at the syntax documentation and uh, and, and 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 figure this stuff out here. Um, but we're searching for adventurous or journeys. That's what the the text operator here will do with the query. It'll basically do an or across the the various words that are there. So adventures or journeys. Notice that the movie titles themselves were Adventure and Journey. So this is not an exact match here. And as you can see here, we actually don't even find any documents uh, using Encompass here to uh, issue this search here. Again, we're focusing on movies that have Keanu and then searching within that for adventurous journeys. Nothing found when we do our path on the title field here. Now, we can correct this by doing some trickery with uh, the analysis on, on a field. Um, so let's take a look at how that works. So I'm over here in the JSON uh, editor for our movies search index, the default search index that we have set up. And for our mapping for our title field, 
again, go look at the documentation links below to, uh, to get the details on how this configuration works. We're looking at the title field here and we've set it up as a string field and we're doing uh, multi-indexing on that. So uh, not only do we uh, use our custom analyzer, we'll talk about that uh, a fair bit later, and then we have, uh, we're mapping the, the Lucene English, which is provided as part of Atlas Search, um, as the analyzer for a uh, field type, a multi-field type we call just English, where we're using the Lucene.English analyzer, again, on the title field here. And what that English analyzer will do for us, and I'll show you a view of that in just a minute, that will tokenize the text uh, so that uh, it makes it uh, searchable uh, with English rules applied, such as stemming the suffixes of the words. And so now when we are in our compass tool, we can form a query that looks like this where we're gonna do an English version of that. And it gets a, a little bit more interesting syntax here when we um, apply our multi analyzer on the title field for English. And you can see here, we actually matched um, adventure and journey. So here we go, we've got Bill and Ted's bogus journey followed by Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Um, so adventurous or journeys matched these two documents. What I want to point out about that is that the compound operator um, is a very powerful operator. So let's go explore the various operators that you have available for Atlas Search. So let's see here. So at the documentation for operators, again, we'll link that uh, down below. Um, here are the operators built into Atlas Search. And just gonna highlight a few of these things because uh, many of these are meant for specific data types such as geo or numeric. And uh, while those are useful and powerful uh, uh, expressions to be able to, to leverage to uh, constrain uh, search spaces, um, the more interesting and kind of the topic of this particular episode is about operators that provide full text search and uh, relevancy weighting. So those particular operators are, we want to focus on the compound operator and the text operator and the phrase operator. And to a lesser extent, there's also the uh, regex operator and the wildcard operator. Both of those are still useful, but given caveats on, um, you know, using any kind of operator that's going to do a, a broad search and uh, may have to um, do a lot of work to uh, match a particular expression. So um, let's leverage our an analyzers and our text and phrase query expressions more often to achieve good searchability and relevancy on our full text fields. So relevancy, when you are doing full text searches, uh, one of the things that uh, is interesting is how to get the results ordered in the best possible uh, documents at the top of the list that the user is looking for, um, that their query intention um, would deliver uh, the best documents at the top for them. And that's what we want um, our applications to do when it's leveraging Atlas Search. Now, Atlas Search provides a lot of the framework for you, but to actually achieve good relevancy requires understanding how the clauses that you provide in your search operator uh, get scored and weighted. And I'm going to just kind of briefly give you um, a, a little diagram here. So when you issue a query, that query can be made up of multiple clauses. And that is where the compound operator comes in, where you can use a compound operator with uh, filters or must or should clauses. Now, when we're talking about relevancy, really only the must and should clauses matter, um, where uh, we can provide uh, multiple clauses. We can nest one compound inside of another so that we can get a, a tree of various uh, search clauses. And uh, each one of these clauses carries a particular weight um, or a scoring component. So uh, the search results that return from Atlas Search are all scored uh, against the query that has been provided. And so 
using the clauses and the weights and the scoring components functions even um, on each one of these uh, nodes uh, or clauses within the entire query, uh, you can order and weight each of these uh, independently and uh, fine tune uh, and achieve nuanced uh, uh, relevancy that will you know, benefit your users and your applications. One of the phrases that I've just uh, kind of been thinking about is that, that, that fits here is you want to match lots of ways. You want to match the user's query to your documents in lots of ways and let relevancy sort it out. When you provide multiple clauses that match slightly different ways and you can say things like the title, matching on the title field is more important than matching on say the plot field um, and even less important would be matching on say the director field or so. So you have the choice to weight these clauses against different fields or against different analysis using the multi-analysis or different um, field types there so that you can weight these clauses and have them match independently and differently and uh, again achieve really nuanced relevancy control. And finally I want to uh, point out a couple of things here. Uh, there is an article that uh, yours truly wrote and again, the link will be provided here about this relevancy topic here. And that gives a lot of details. The, the code in the article is Java admittedly. So if you're not a Java uh, coder, that's quite okay actually. A lot of this stuff is generic about Atlas search and the configuration of uh, setting it up so that you can get those scoring details of these various clauses um, uh, detailed in the response that you get back from from at your your dollar search stage in your aggregation pipeline uh, so check this article out again not doesn't require java just happens to be the example in there um, kind of uh, leverages it so check that out for some relevancy um, tips pro tips in there and uh, lastly as we're talking about searching here I want to emphasize uh, another really potent capability of Atlas Search, and that is the ability to track search terms. And that is achieved by using um, a facility called Query Analytics. The Query Analytics of Atlas Search is enabled on uh, tiers that are greater than M0. So um, at the M10 and above tiers, and there's a note here that explains that, um, the tracking option um, will be leveraged. Now, it doesn't hurt to put the tracking option in there when you're on the free tier. And in fact, I'd go ahead and encourage you to do that so that your, your application is ready when you um, are ready to kit use the query analytics. When you add these tracking codes into your queries, what you get are uh, uh, graphs and, and, and useful feedback that show all the search queries that are, are coming through your system um, using the tracking codes that you gave it and it will provide the detailed search aggregation that that generated that tracking code and then you can also get a, a, a plot of queries with no results and that's very useful for determining uh, where you need to adjust again, the searchability stuff that we're talking about, either adjusting the analysis that happens at indexing time or the query clauses that you're using at query time to answer questions that maybe your system is not responding with any useful documents or zero documents. So um, take a look at this query analytics. This is a way that um, you can improve the ROI of your system if you're selling things through a search system based on Atlas Search. Um, and it's a, a way that you can um, delight your users um, if maybe if you're not selling things, but you're providing a system that your users are going to be happier with when they find documents that they maybe didn't find before because you improved the analysis process. So again, thank you for checking out the Atlas search scene. We'll see you on the next episode.